Okay, we're studying the laws of Lashon Hara. We're on a Klal Vav, Halacha Vav, chapter 6, Halacha number 6. And we're talking about the prohibition to listen to Lashon Hara. And we went over a Halacha yesterday that if you are in a place that you're sitting down and people start speaking Lashon Hara, if you can leave, you should leave. And if you can't leave, you should stick your fingers in your ears. If you can't do that, then the best thing to do is obviously that is that is the best thing to do to put your fingers in your, your ears but if you can't leave then you, you should do three things one you can't believe anything they say two it can't be pleasing any of the lashon hara and three you can't make any movements to indicate that you agree and you're encouraging with what they're saying uh, and of course really the preferable preferable thing to do is if you can tell them to stop and they'll listen to you but if they won't listen to you you for sure should not do that so let's continue with halacha vav. Up until now, we were talking about when you're sitting with these people and they <coughs> and they didn't start speaking evil yet. And now you're not able to leave. But if when you want to when you want to go sit down initially. They already started speaking the evil speech, meaning you know that they're speaking Lashon Hara, but nevertheless you go and sit down with them. Or you were already sitting with them and then they started speaking Lashon Hara and you had the ability to leave. And you didn't leave. Or you didn't necessarily sit down with them when they spoke, when they started speaking Lashon Hara, but you know that these guys are some evil folks that always sit around speaking Lashon Hara. If that's the case, and nevertheless you go and sit with them, even though you don't participate in what they're saying and you don't help uh, them at all in what they're saying, you don't you don't join with them, and it's not pleasing to you, nevertheless you're called a sinner. You violate what the rabbis say, that you should distance yourself from those that speak evil. So the Chavetz Chaim is telling us here that he had a leniency. The leniency was in the previous case where you sit down. Because um, you, usually when you do a sin, usually when there's a sin going on, you have to run away from the sin. However, we had a leniency that if you sit down with a group of people and there's nothing going wrong, they're, they're fine people, nice people, and they just start, after you already sat down, they started speaking Lashon Har, and you're not able for whatever reason to get up and leave, you're on a plane, you're on a bus. So he had a leniency that you don't have to necessarily stick your fingers in ears to not listen, but what you could do is with those three conditions, you could not believe it, and it's not pleasing to you, and you don't do any motions to indicate that you agree with them. That was a leniency where it's permitted and you can get out of violating any prohibition. So the Chavetz Chaim now tells us that that's only where you sat down and they hadn't started speaking Lashon Hara and you can't leave. But if they already started speaking Lashon Hara and you knew about it and then you sat down or you had the ability to leave and you chose not to when they were speaking Lashon Hara or they're just bad people that always sit around talking Lashon Hara and nevertheless you sat down, that leniency doesn't help. It does not help you to sit there and not listen. You have to get up and leave or stick your fingers in your ears. And all the more so, if you're sitting there and your intent is to listen to their evil words, his sin is too great to bear, and he'll be inscribed in the heavenly book of remembrances upstairs, B'Shem Ish Rasha, that he's an evildoer, an evil person. Ubala Shinhari, one who speaks Lashon Hara, could the Isa be pirked the Rebbe Lazar, but Savas Rebbe Lazar Gadol should see the Lebano Horkenes Rebbe Lazar Hagadol commanded his son Horkenes was at Lashano Bini. He said, "My son, Al Teishiv bechabura sa Oymrim Ram mechavreim. Don't sit with a group of people that speak evil about their friends." Ubala Lashon Hara, Al Kain Tzarech Adam lehisrachik meod meod mechabura rakazu. Therefore, a person has to. Tr- try very hard, very, very hard, he writes two verys there, to distance himself from this evil group of people. So, if a, he's, he's saying again how evil it is to, one, it's evil to go and sit amongst a group of people that are speaking Lashon Hara, and all the more so if you believe it. If you believe it, he says that a person gets inscribed as an evil person in the heavenly books upstairs, which is not very good, and, uh, 
you think about it, that Rebbe Lazar, one of the things that he commanded his son, right, the most important thing he said is not to sit amongst a group of people who are evildoers, who speak evil about others. Okay, let's go on to Halacha Zayin, which is another case. He says, Veda, no. He says that just like there's a prohibition to believe Lashon Hara, so too if you already know the topic which you are speaking about, which, which this person is speaking about, and you could judge him favorably or negatively. We'll give an example soon. And the one speaking judges him negatively. And through this, by judging him negatively, he denigrates him. We know that there's a mitzvah anytime you hear something to judge him favorably. It's a Torah, a Torah commandment, according to many. Now, if you hear this thing and you don't judge him favorably, and you agree to the speaker uh, about the denigration, it's not enough that you violate to judge, judge your people favorably. He's also called someone who listens to Lashon Har. And since you fail to judge him favorably, you now violate the prohibition of Lush and Har. So what's the case he's talking about? The case is where I know something about somebody. I know I know an action that happened, let's say. Let's say our, our case we've been discussing, Shmuel takes money out of the tzedakah box. So I know this. I saw Shmuel do it, let's say. Now somebody comes, and I, I judged him favorably. I said, oh, he was taking money out of the tzedakah box, but he wasn't stealing. He was probably just taking money and giving, uh, I didn't see him put in the 20 and take out the change. He was getting change, but he wasn't stealing. Now comes somebody else and says, hey, you know, Shmuel took money out of the tzedakah box and he was stealing. He stole from the synagogue. Can you believe that? And now after hearing this, I say, wow, you know what? He probably was stealing. So at that point, even though I already knew the action that Shmuel took money out of the tzedakah box, previously I had judged him favorably, that he was just getting change. But now that this guy came and told me, now that I agree with him in his negative interpretation, now I violate the prohibition of listening and believing Lashon Hara. And the Chavetz Chaim says, with that I violate more than, in addition to violating, I didn't judge him favorably, my friend favorably, also, I violated the prohibition of accepting Lashon Hara. So again, the cases where I knew the event happened, I had previously judged this person favorably, and now I judge him negatively. Because remember, any time, whether it's we hear something from somebody or we see somebody do something, there's always, if it's a regular Jewish person, and it's not an evil person who does a lot of sins, then there's a mitzvah to judge him favorably. Okay. And... Um, Okay, let's stop here. Have a beautiful day.